Welcome back to another episode of Day One Radio right here on Live Hip Hop Daily. We appreciate y'all watching us here, listening to us to via the podcast on CLNS Media. What's going on, bro? So everything going on, man. Pretty good. Pretty good. That's what's you know what up. Saying? That's what's up. Yeah, man. It's been a, a a crazy week, man. Shout out to all our folks that was down in Austin, the South by Southwest. I know that had to be mm. a little scary. Man, it's like I was at the barbershop this morning. And, you know, in, in case y'all don't know where we're going with this, there have been multiple bombings in Austin, Texas. And, you know, I can't say that it's not getting national news coverage because I did see it on headline news. I mean, I know that's not, you know, Rachel Maddow primetime, but it was on headline news at least. But there have been multiple bombings throughout Austin, Texas, um, mail bombs that are killing people. And they have all been black folks and yeah. it's like god that, damn we can't even open our mail now bro there was one uh i don't know if she was a latin or hispanic uh lady who who died from a bomb but the bomb wasn't even addressed to her or to that house it was supposed to go two doors down which was to a black family but it's like the fbi and the local authorities are apprehensive about saying that this is a hate crime, saying this is domestic terrorism, saying any of that, and it, it's 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 a little wild to me. Like, cause it, if it's the other way around, then immediately, you know, they're gonna put it on some Muslims, or they're gonna right. put it on, or they're gonna put it on a white boy and say it was a mental health issue. But now all of a sudden, you can't find no suspects, and this whoever was doing it, or the people that were doing it. It wasn't like some of these bo- some of these packages went through the mail. They were walking the packages up to the crib. So as many people got, uh, you know, what's not nest? What's the the ring? Mm-hmm. You know, the cameras outside the crib. You can see it on your cell phone. All of that. We live in a police state. We live in a surveillance state. You can't tell me that ain't nobody seen nothing. Like, well, see, and, and that's that's the question I have. But like, later on, I definitely want to make sure we shout out these names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. So you know, but um, that was my question. Like, so like, and I'm hearing all these bombings, and then you know, you had the one that exploded at the FedEx facility today in San Antonio. I'm like, so like, how are these packages getting there? Is it going through FedEx? Is it going through UPS? Well, I like, know two of them were walked up. One of them was a trip. Like they set up some kind of trip situation mm-hmm. that somebody got hit on a bicycle and then the FedEx is like dog if you go if you're delivering something through FedEx you're dropping it off at a FedEx box which most of the boxes are in business development so there are millions of cameras and you're also or you're dropping stuff off at a FedEx Kinko's so there are hella cameras you know what I'm saying like that's what I'm saying. It like, should be easy to trace. Right you know what I'm saying I mean two things I was concerned about was like one just from personal safety is like I was wondering, like, what these boxes were looking like. Because I know, granted, like, I'm not, you know, on no fearful stuff right now. But if a strange box showed up on my doorstep, I would not be quick to open right. it. Like, granted, no, no. like, I get a lot of special packages. But it's like, right. if it's not a package that I'm expecting, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm like, well, hold on. I didn't order anything or... Okay, I I don't I'm not expecting anything. Like, what is this thing am I doing? I'm probably not going to open this. I'm wondering like just how these packages are actually being presented to where somebody feels okay, cool. I'm going to open this box that just showed up at my doorstep. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, I mean it's probably like you know Austin is not like a, a bad area. Like people probably just thinking like, oh, maybe this went to the wrong person. Or may, let me look at the address and see maybe it was supposed to go to my neighbor. Or people order stuff from Amazon all the time and forget mm-hmm. they ordered it. So maybe they thought that's what it was. So, like, have they revealed whether the boxes are being opened and they going off? Or nah, they, they like haven't it's said. And- to, to my knowledge, they haven't said a whole lot, um, as far as I know. But it's 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 definitely from like doing a little bit of research. They seem to be targeting. Uh, I don't want to say affluent because I don't know their financial situation, but they seem to be targeting well-known black families in Austin. And if you've ever been to Austin before, you can walk around all day and not see nobody black. Mm-hmm. So this is this is very much sorry. We our mutual homeboy uh, CJ. Last time I kicked it with him in Austin, he was like, "Dude, I see black people at concerts and church." Hmm. <laughs> at the end of the day, so. It's not a, a heavily populated black city, so 
that means that this was really targeted. Mm-hmm. So I, I think a lot of people have seen the kid, uh, Draylon Mason, who was 17 years old, who played in you know the youth orchestra in Austin, as well as played in a couple other bands. And I know he had already got accepted to college, a music program, a University of Texas. So that's a major loss. And then you had uh, the, the, the teen's grandfather, Norman Mason. He was a, a, a big dentist in East Austin. I think East Austin has some black neighborhoods, but they're connected to um, a guy named Freddie Dixon, who was the stepfather of a guy, another person killed by a bomb, Anthony House. And, and, and from what I understand, Freddie Dixon was the leader of a, the African-American Cultural Heritage District and was also the pastor of one of the oldest black churches in the city. Mm. So these are people that are tied in to the community. Mm. This I don't think this is just happenstance. Right. These are the people that happen to get hit. I think they was trying to get people in the crib, in those houses. You know, and then there's also a note where, you know, it's out there that, you know, the, a bomb um, that hit, you know, the... Um, the Latin woman, Hispanic, you know, so we don't know which one, but uh, that was meant for a black neighbor. Yeah, yeah, the two doors down, I believe, because it was witnesses. Now, I don't know how they know, but it was witnesses right. that said that that package wasn't even addressed to that house. So I, I don't know how that happens. I don't know what's going on. Make me not want to ever pick up no mail addressed to somebody right, else. Saying, it's like, damn, we can't even open the mail, bruh. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Going on. And it... it, it Leaked over in the South by Southwest because the Root Show got canceled because of a bomb threat. Hmm. So it's crazy. Like I, the last place in the world I would expect black people to be in targeted in supposedly liberal Austin, Texas. Right. And let you know that it, 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 it whole term of liberal might just be the fallacy that you know what I'm saying. <laughs> that so many people have claimed because you know it's like. You know, there's 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 quote unquote liberals that sit on the sideline and just watch things develop and happen and be like, well, I have empathy for it. I wouldn't do anything like that. But then you do it, my business, right? But it ain't none of my business. And then you do have some people that are like, oh, okay, man, let me you know get on the front lines with these people and actually prove that I am down for this cause. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, man. yeah, it's, it's it's a lot going on, man. I I, I pray for those people out in Austin and and. I hope the police and and the FBI and all the law enforcement involved actually catch this person or people um, and do something about it. But the fact that they're saying that there are no suspects at this point make me think that it it might be some inside job type stuff. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's like, how is this stuff getting to the doorstep? You know what I'm saying? It's like, if there's one at FedEx exploding... It's like, you know, granted, it's cameras. It's cameras. So, I mean, I know investigations are not, you know, one hour jobs. You know right. what I'm saying? But this has but, been going on for three weeks. Right. It's been, the, was, it's been going on the entire month of March. If there was anything else that was happening this consistently for three weeks, and then they're saying things that let you know that they know something, like the package that blew up in San Antonio at FedEx, they're saying was meant for Austin. Well, if you knew it was meant for Austin, Texas, then you can trace the package. Right. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? FedEx got a million boxes at every distribution center. So how you know that particular box? I don't think you can still read barcodes and addresses after an explosive go off. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm a still, maybe this might be some new kind of dynamite. I don't right, know. Right. <laughs> well, I, I did see on the news they said the person that you know got injured, they've already been treated and released. So um, that sounds like it wasn't. A thing where like every, they must it, it must have left some behind some kind of evidence, right? If it's you know if it didn't kill the person, it just said the person got treated and released. So you know, that's good, man. It, it's uh, it's it's a lot going on, man. One of the the other stories that that crept up this week, uh, I, we hadn't heard this man's name in a minute, Harvey Weinstein. Mm. We we know uh, the a, a collective of women bought the company, the Harvey Weinstein company. Word? Yeah, and well, that came out a couple of weeks ago, but they filed for bankruptcy. Uh, the company filed for bankruptcy, which we know that's just a business tactic. Um, but within that bankruptcy, all the non-disclosure agreements, which he's been hiding behind, became null and void. Ooh. So the story's going to start Ooh. popping up left and right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's going to go down. 
Damn, this is decades and decades of stuff Bro. that's about to come out, man. Like the the cloak on the industry about to really just be Bro. revealed, dog. Yeah. Man, I mean, not that it's like not you know stuff out there but in the open already, but it's like man. I'm sure it was people that said what they felt they could say, but they didn't say everything mm. quite yet. But they they released a statement uh, saying effective immediately all those agreements. And the uh, the company releases any confidentiality provision to the extent it prevented individuals who suffered or witnessed any form of sexual misconduct mm. by Harvey Weinstein from telling their stories. No one should be afraid to speak out or coerced to stay quiet. The company thanks the courageous individuals who have come forward. Your voices have inspired a movement for a change across the country and the world. Damn. So they like, we want to hear it. Let That's it, a hell of a play. Happen. Buy the company, go bankrupt to tell the story. Bruh. Gangsta shit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He he might as well just move to another country, bro. Yeah. He he's toxic. At the, at this point. Ain't nobody trying to stand next to him. At all. At, at all. all. And he's gonna be dead broke. If, Cause I don't know if a lot of these people already got paid off. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm sure there's people who just suffered in silence too, and and they gonna come out and say something because if you ain't afraid no more, you like hey we need to get to it. If you ain't going to jail, I need some bread. Yeah, everybody you need about to, to suffer say in some kind of way. So yeah, that's that's uh, whew, it's it's one of them things. I, I I'm afraid to even ask you this because I already know the answer because your ass don't be watching nothing. <laughs> <But> <laughs> nothing. Have you seen The Shy yet? Have you seen any of the episodes at all? I have not seen any of the episodes yet. Yet. Okay. Well, <laughs> the season finale was this past Sunday. You ain't even got your mic over there. I heard. No, no. But see, I'm on Showtime. Oh, Herb, our producer, didn't see it either. Yeah. You've seen it? Okay. You ain't even got the mic set up. I don't talk to you. Man, so... The Shy is a, a show based in Chicago, um, kind of about the just live people's lives in Chicago. I don't want to ruin it for anybody who didn't see it. I don't know how the ratings are, so I don't know how how great everything you know how good or bad. But you have seen Masters of None, right? Yes, I have seen Masters of None. So yes. you know the um, the the black lady yeah. on Masters of None, Lena Waithe, who right? Was, Aziz Ansari's home home girl mm -hmm. on the show, she is the creator of the shot. Right. So she's from right. Chicago. Knew that. Knew that. Yeah. So, you know, she won an Emmy. It's this is so interesting. Like, she got hot midway through the show being on. So she was talking to the Chicago Tribune, basically saying, like, I came in, yes, everybody thinks I'm the showrunner, so this is great or whatever, but there's some things that I didn't necessarily like. And because I was a newbie in the game, they kind of made things go a certain way. But as she got super hot during the show, because she won an Emmy and started getting all the all the prestige and stuff, and she got another show, Greenlit, on TBS, now they uh, for the next season there's another black lady who's coming on. What is her name? I wrote it down. Uh, Anna Floyd Davis, who people – probably know from being behind the scenes on Empire, Fallen Skies, Hannibal, all that stuff, who's going to be the showrunner. And I believe Lena Waithe is going to be writing a lot of the stuff for the second season. Hmm. And she said it was going to be much blacker. Yeah, cause that, that is the one <laughs> criticism that I heard from people that were watching the show. Nobody, I didn't hear anybody say the show was garbage, but there were people that were saying, I, I, this, this ain't, it ain't the Chicago I know. Or, the, you know, it ain't the Chicago I'm from or Chicago that I've visited. You know what I'm saying? Granted, I don't really have anything to judge it against. I haven't right. seen it for myself. But I, that was the one criticism that I did here. People said the show was good, but there was a lot of things that were, like, just left to the imagination, not included, that yeah. are authentically a part of being in Chicago. She wrote the she wrote and and was heavily behind the pilot. And from there, I think it was different people that, that wrote and directed episodes after the first one. But um, I think next season is going to be super official because she hot. Like, you got an Emmy. You kind of just got a ride. Like, she was even saying that people on the on the staff were scared to shoot on the south side. And, 
you know what I mean, and, and all of that type of stuff. But she was saying that, like, she was also very respectful of not just being over the top with, like, all the landmarks and all of that mm-hmm. stuff. Because, A, and she didn't really say this, but you read between the lines. She was like, these blocks is how people get their bread and butter. Essentially, like, this is how... Motherfuckers be out here hustling. It's the hot block. So you don't want to, you know, you don't want to stop nobody putting no money in their pocket because you want to shoot a TV show. So right. she's and trying that, that to kind of remind me of. Uh, I, I read something once where you know they were going in about like Martin Luther King's history here in Atlanta uh-huh. and how he had a relationship with street cats where they were like, "Look, bro, we love what you're doing with the protests and the marches and all that, but." Don't come on this street with it. We got we got your back everywhere else, but do not come on this street with that shit. Cause you gotta respect. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is where we doing our thing at. Just you gotta keep respect it on that block. Me. And he was like, "All right, cool." You know you what I'm saying? You gotta um, respect. Can I me. can I ask how how was um Commons acting? How was it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> 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 you answered my question. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I never want to disrespect Common because I really respect the brother and his talent. He's not a great actor. We all know that. At least the things that I've seen him in. Wait, wait. So wait, you didn't like him in um? What's when he was in the, the assassin? The ace of smoking ace, smoking aces. Smoking aces. That might be like his best role because he didn't do that much talking. <laughs> <laughs> you have a point. He was he was kind of convincing. He played a I I don't know if he was an imam. I don't know if he was running the mosque, but he plays a Muslim brother at a mosque in Chicago. Um, and it's just it's it his, he be so serious. Yeah, did you see that movie Love? You see that movie Love? Remember the movie Love? The one that was in Baltimore? I don't know. Wait, wait, I wait. That. I think I like that one. Yeah, That's when he was with the little kid. Yeah. Was, I did see that. That I was did dope. See that. that was decent. I, I can rock with that. That was a kind of a disturbing ass movie, though. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was a lot. That movie took some turns. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that was a disturbing movie. That was one I tried to put out of my head <laughs> at some point. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, he was okay. He wasn't in it a whole lot. He probably was in like. Maybe four or five episodes. Yeah, like four or five. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he he's definitely on behind the scenes. He's a he's a decision maker on the show, as he should be from Chicago or whatnot. But it it's he was all right, man. Like I I just really Common got to start turning down jobs at some point. Hilarious. Common duck. That dude is everywhere. He makes like dad rap now. Like. Oh, uh, you got to talk into the mic, bro. I feel like he could have killed the road, Yeah, though. you got you to introduce yourself. They don't uh, know who you are. Jay Black, man. Follow me at Innovative Black Station. We didn't tell you to say all that, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, what do you got? The jazz juice? You got the jazz juice. I get crazy. Uh, but, so, uh, nah, but what, what was you? I think, I mean, I think he really could have killed that role. Like, seeing him, I'm like, that's common. I feel like that could, you know, right. he would be a person that would kill a, a kill a role like that, but. He might just need to take more acting classes or something. Maybe next season. Like, I feel like everything's a monologue. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I need him to play off of the his the person he's on the screen with yeah. more. I thought the, the scenes between him and uh, the brother, the, the older brother who, who killed the kid, yeah. I thought they were decent, but it could have – it was so, like – like out the gate intense. Yeah. Like it's like yeah, let's cause let's won't. work cuz I don't feel like two strangers are going to interact like that like yeah. off top. Yeah. I feel like the older guy his role was kind of pissing me off throughout the it was kind of like dragged out in a sense. But it was I thought it was but it was real. It was but <laughs> I think the kid uh what's his name Jason uh the guy who played Easy and Straight Out of Compton he killed it. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's a great actor. Let me ask you this: What's your prediction? Uh, I don't even want to give it away. You don't want to ruin anything. What's your, what, well, I guess I got. We can't really talk about. Spoiler it. alert! <laughs> What's your prediction? If you haven't seen it, pause the podcast. <laughs> pause live hip hop daily and come back. But go ahead. With 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 they they took him in and he basically in question. Oh, it's a wrap for the brother. Yeah, it's a wrap. He going he he's Easy. gonna be in jail for Easy. Oh no 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 no! Um, nah, with him, he, I, even with the little boy. Nah, with with him, I don't think anything's gonna come back to them, um, per se. 
I, I think that he's going to end up being partners with the dope boy. The dope boy is going to invest cool. in the truck. Uh, J- the easy E cat, okay. Jason. I think the dope boy is going to invest in, yeah. the, in the food truck. Yeah. And they're going to be partners in some kind of way. He's not really going to want to, but, you know, yeah. that's the game. It My is. thing, too, I mean, I felt like the story – like the storyline was too connected. Do you you get that in this sense? Like everything was connected. like Crash. Yeah, Remember the like, movie Crash? Yeah, everything. I, that's one thing. When at the beginning I didn't like it. Uh-huh. Even as it went along, like I still it was just I don't know. Yeah, but they all kind of lived in the same hood, so you yeah. could kind of see that. But I, I I thought it was decent. I thought Common did okay. I, I'm definitely looking forward to season two. Definitely. If you guys haven't watched it, watch it, um, and then go to the Chicago Tribune. They had a. They recapped every episode, and from what Lena Waithe was saying, she really agreed with like a lot of their criticisms of the show. Um, but she was like, "Next season, we got a lot more control. It's gonna be way blacker. It's gonna be way more authentic, without being like super over the top." So I'm looking forward to season two. So speaking of shows about Emmys and cities, what are, what do we think of Atlanta so far? We're three. Three episodes in. What do you think it's of great, episode? man. Like you wasn't here. You wasn't here when we discussed episode one and episode two. But I, I like it, man. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's darker. Yeah. I think any art is not going to be the same the second time around. If you're really an artist, you're never going to want to do the same right. exact thing. Um, I like that it's not super spelled out. I like that it's so authentic. And a lot of people that are from Atlanta or have lived here for a while say it's super authentic to the Atlanta experience. I think it's super authentic to the black experience yeah. because I, I was discussing this. Um, I was at our, our homeboy, Berto. I was at, he had a little house party and we were all chopping it up. And I'm like, bro, this is one of the very few shows where you get the, the, the personal aspect, the human aspect of hood cats, square cats, cats that are trying to be famous, mm-hmm. you know, gangsters drug dealers, the dude that's fresh out that just made a mistake. Like, you get all of that, and it shows that these lives intertwine. It's not just put in a box. Like, you can be a thug or a dope boy, and your partner can be a square cat, and y'all can still kick it and do business together, and it's just, it is what it is. Right, and I um, I read uh, Donald Glover's profile in The New Yorker recently. I haven't read, is that the one where he was talking about uh, Jesus and stuff? What's he talking about? Jesus? He said something about not wanting to be a savior or something like that. Oh yeah, 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 it's something like that. But like one thing that that, that uh, stuck out to me, he said when well, he was like describing his character and how he was trying to sell FX on it, where he was just like Esquire was reading something about Jesus. I was okay, talking about gotcha. um, New Yorker. So like he had a he he was saying pretty much like when he was trying to you know show FX what he was doing, they were like, eh, like, who wins? Like, people like to see a winner on TV. Your character is not winning. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, Earn is a stupid character. Like, he be oh, doing stupid, some super dumb stupid. shit. Super and, it's like, and, and I feel like this, that's another way that that show sticks out and remains successful because you're like really looking at this character like, damn, he just going to keep doing super stupid stupid stuff like he's not winning right like this man is broke homeless got four g's in an envelope it has nothing to show for this nothing next episode we don't know how much with the check we don't they never said how much the check was they didn't say but he goes to the strip club so he can stunt right you know what i'm saying so it's like after hearing him say that we was like look i wasn't trying to create a character or characters that Win, you know what I'm saying? Like this is just regular nigga shit. <laughs> Stupid that's literally shit. what it is. You know what I'm saying? Human shit. That's you know that's that's really what it is. But no, I think the show is phenomenal, man. I I, I think it's been great so far, for sure, most definitely. Um, and and, and speaking of, of stupid stuff, oh. are you are y'all familiar with uh, this rapper out of uh, Toronto named Nav? Can't say that no, I, I don't know him, but I heard what he said about the double XL thing. Okay, like, well, we're going to take it back a little further than that. So this dude, he's a Punjabi Indian cat that grew up in um, an area called Toronto called Rexland, which I believe Rexland. is, yeah, is yeah. you know, a lot of Africans, a lot of Jamaicans, mm-hmm. a lot of quote-unquote immigrants or whatnot. And 
he some years ago when he got on because he signed to the weekend um and you know he got on through the whole toronto connection Drake, yada 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 so he was had songs where he was saying nigga so i'm just confused how you go from saying nigga in songs and you ain't nowhere near black to coming out and saying because a white woman is the editor-in-chief of a magazine that she should not be in the position to pick the double xl freshman cover like that's like entitlement so, 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 on top so, of so, entitlement so, so, so his beef at the moment is what he came out hold on let me pull this up I don't want. I don't want to miss. I don't want to misquote this nigga. Uh, <laughs> but you don't consider him black, though. You don't consider him black. Why would I consider somebody from India black? You know. You know what's, what's funny with me coming from New York, and we go to the stores, and the Arab type of people, just like him, look like him, is there. We all in the same. Dude, area. I'm from the so, Bay. I grew up in a melting pot. So, so and in, when so, I was coming up. I don't know. This is some new generational shit. When I was, I went to school with Asians, Mexicans, white people, black people. You say nigga, you'd have got the shit slapped out of you off top. I don't give a fuck if you grew up in the bedroom next to me. Mm-hmm. If you ain't black, no, nah, nah, no, but everybody could say it except white people. As no, as hell no. Asians, hell no. All Asians don't fuck with black people. Right, true, you familiar true. with Latasha Harlins? Hilarious, <laughs> but true, true. But it, it, it comes on. It goes about what we 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 Bruh, grew up at. We grew up at. I don't give a fuck. Period. If you are not black, I don't care. Put it to you like this. Not even the Puerto Rican. Paul Wall. Uh, right. Puerto Ricans are black. That's what I. So why he's not black? Slave <laughs> ships. Oh. <laughs> got dropped off in several of the Caribbean islands before they came to the United States. Ain't no slave ships went from Africa to India. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You, you're right on that. That's all I'm saying. Paul Wall is the blackest person I know who is not black, and I've never heard him say the word nigga. Right. Ever. So nobody has an excuse. Mm. True. Eminem never said it either. Yeah, he did. He said it on songs like <laughs> super early. Early, early, early. But anyway, demo super early. And I and I've been I've been on Paul Wall for shit fifteen more or more years, well before he blew up. But anyway, um, Nav posted a picture of, of Vanessa Satin, and to be completely fair, V is not one of my favorite people in the world. He posted it on his Instagram. Said, "This is who decides." On who's on the double XL freshman list, not completely true. I refuse to wine and dine you and play you my new music before my fans. I will never show up for your list. No cap. Then he says to my fellow artists, we shouldn't look to a magazine for validation or to tell us if we hot or not, especially one that hasn't been credible for 10 years at double XL. Make music for yourself and your fans. I would never show up for the freshman list because I don't need their approval. I wouldn't show up for that freshman list. Fuck Double XL. Your magazine is trash. Sorry. I mean website. So then he drops a song called Freshman List, and the name of his upcoming tour is Freshman List. It sounds like he wanted some attention, and it sounds like great marketing, Mm -hmm. if it lasts for more than 24 hours. My thing is, I'm not disagreeing with the majority of what he's saying. But why are you so mad? <laughs> if you don't want to be on the list, why you got to say, fuck the list? I don't really understand that. And my whole thing, too, with, you know, with outlashing like this, is like, granted, like, you know, XXL has obviously seen better years. This is true. Better days. But. For hip hop centered media to still be so niche and small compared to mainstream, I know we like to say that you know hip hop is pop culture now. It's like, eh, you know, what I'm saying like there's people, there's folks in the general population just like hurt certain people. They don't mm-hmm. like hip hop as a whole. You know, what I'm saying true. That's they real. like the hot song on the radio. They ain't That's down real. for the culture. That's so real. it's like That's when you still have a publication, and like I said, XSS has obviously seen better days. But when you still have publications out here that exist for the culture, right. quote unquote, 
I'm not that. Who else is putting 21 Savage on the cover? Right, of like, right, right, right. Like, who else is giving representation like that? There are still people out here that are checking for XXL. Is right. it as many people as it was 10, 15 years ago? No. You know what I'm right. saying? Because there's different outlets. But, like, I don't, I'm not down for somebody just downing an entire publication because of something that they want that they did not get or whatever this messy situation is. Like, who are you to come out and speak so harshly on a publication that's been around since 1997? You know what I'm saying? I think before that, say 96. No, 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 it came out in 97 because they okay. had Master P and Jay-Z on the first cover. Right, right, right. I remember this because that's when I was still stealing magazines out of Kroger. <laughs> <and shit. laughs> you know because <what> <laughs> they had uh, Goody Mob and D'Angelo on the, on the second one. Yeah. You know, and man. Too Short. Too Short was on the second or third cover. Now, how was the music, though? His music? I've only heard a couple songs. It was okay. I mean, my thing is this, bro. Like, you got to help. You're a, you are an outsider. Like, Ooh, like Double XL put a lot of people on, and granted, he says it hasn't been relevant in ten years. That's well and fine. Like I can speak on this. I helped select the first freshman list, so like I know you know where the foundation of all this shit. When you say first, which first? The the, the one that had Joel mm-hmm. Ortiz in them, or the one that had um uh like I'm talking Wale, about you know, the. Like- First, first one, one. Oh, so, like the so, first so not so the leaders of new cool cover it. whatever it, whatever it was t- 2008 2007 with, with, with Papoose and all exactly Papoose, the, first, the first one yeah the first one the leaders first of new one cool. with yeah. crooked eye yada 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 the yeah. first one boosie the original Rich boy one. yes Jerome. the one that paved the way for all of this bullshit right. that we see on the covers now so but a lot of these um a lot of these artists now you know that's what people like to an extent. And also, this dude is 28. So, like, of course he's not going to be feeling a 19, 20-year-old, you know, vibe rapper that just goes in and whatever, whatever. And that's fine, but, bread, like, I, I just don't understand. It just seemed like it came out of nowhere. It seemed like some personal shit that he put out on his social media, and that's... That's doing a lot, and you burning a lot of bridges. Like, say what you will about V. I don't really fuck with V. We've had our beefs, and we've, I guess, gotten cool or uh, cordial over the years. But, bro, like, she's been there. The entire time, damn near. Damn near. She went from intern by hook or by crook, the editor-in-chief. So, bro, you burning a lot of bridges doing that. Like, I just I I just thought it was it didn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm not saying he was right or is wrong. It just it seemed like out of pocket and it it's, it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. And it's like I know old girl still catches a lot of flack for being a white woman at a magazine, but it's like you know I mean that, that flack just always going to come with the territory if you're not black. But it's like I don't I don't it's like like. I ain't caping for her, but it's like, damn, bro, like, like, but like, really, like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, right, for for my for my, you know, because I used to write for XXL too, yeah. thanks to you. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, like, I, this woman was writing cover stories on Cash Money for XXL when nobody was like, let's put Cash Money on the cover. You know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, That's real. that kind of shit matters to me. It's like, damn, yeah. yo, you you fought to get Juvie on the cover of, you know what I'm saying, a magazine. Birdman on the cover of a magazine, Hot Boys on the cover. Of, you know what I'm saying? Great. I think Daytuan wrote that one, but like, just still, like, you was in the mix to be like, no, we need to put this gold tooth country talking motherfucker on the cover <laughs> of this magazine. Like, right. shit like that matters to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just come out, ah, oh, man, you ain't put me on the freshman list. You know, it's like That's hilarious. You know, but yo, I wanted to ask y'all, being that y'all were writers for Double XL, why do you think she would get the position? Before a day twang. That's well, day twang was editor in chief before she but, was but, editor in chief. But, but why? Why would that's, he that's, be? That's 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 a non on the air conversation. That semi goes to what he's saying as the white. He guy. has no idea. I mean, he what the problem? Because I felt that way too. I be mad when I see it. Not mad because I love Double XL. I love hip hop. Period. But when I see a white face as the fucking top person. Yeah. Like, but see, have, it's, it's I do thing. have some type of... We got Mech in the building. Look like he want to speak <laughs> on something. Yo. What up, everybody? 
<laughs> Yo, I got a double XL freshman story. I, I've been dying to tell my whole entire life, and it's totally an off air story. And when I'm listening <laughs> to y'all, I'm just laughing in my ears. And I'm like, yo, oh, wait till I, I got a story for y'all. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. You could have you could have saved that till after the podcast. But to her point, I was going he said he was going he said he was he was going to say it, but he got on the mic and decided he'll wait. That's cool. Right but like, but like to, to to Herb's point, to Herb's point, like I found you know I, I would hear similar things when I was working at Ozone which was founded by Julia Beverly, right. another white woman. Right. And it's like, you know, I would hear it, but I'd be like, well, damn it. I like, aside from me working with this person, like, even if I was, like, I can't hate on what she's doing. I mean, this person is hopping in a truck, gassing that bitch up, driving from uh, Atlanta to Houston to Memphis to Miami to cover this whole culture. Yeah. I ain't about to be like, oh, man. I, I, like will, I like, will like, say this for Julia, and I feel like Julia has gotten a lot more humble and a lot more cool over the years, mm-hmm. that Julia grinded. Can't yeah. nobody take that away and from her. that's her magazine, right? Yeah, 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 for right. sure. So that's the difference. Yeah, people can't really tell you not to run some shit you started, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> so the Double XL didn't, didn't start with Nah, not at all. Right, right, not right. at all. So that's, that's not at the all. point. Not at all. And, and to me, that's the reason why I believe hip-hop is getting fucked up even more because, right, all executives and all that who sign in some of these dudes is like... It's always been that way, though. Right. And what's ill is right. I be trying to tell these dudes that, like, yo, it's all... Going in the circle. It's, yeah. it's always been like that. It, we have to change it if we want to change it. Right. And, and and kind of piggybacking off of that, I, did you guys see the uh, the article that Puff uh, that they wrote on Puff and um, GQ and how he revealed that him and uh, him and Jay are working on an app for black owned businesses. I, I kind of wish, like, I've met people over the years who have done stuff, and some of these apps kind of exist. I kind of wish, wish yeah. they would have, like, just invested into and one of these right. existing and, joints. And, 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 and made it what's, what's it was, it, was it Shopify? Shop- Spendify. 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 Right. Yeah, We yeah. Buy Black. I met a young lady. I had volunteered somewhere, and she was there in Atlanta. She had one as well. Then you have um, the Cash Mob ATL thing, which here is very big. Um, so it's I wish they kind of, but then if you don't know, like, I think those two dudes are very insulated from what's going on on a grassroots level. So okay, they might not have known at all. Mm-hmm. But Nah, they they know. Come on. It, it's, it's, uh, it, there's websites that tell you all the black. Stuff. Yeah, but I mean, so bro, you're speaking from happen? an example of a, a, a person that works. You're not speaking from an example of somebody who doesn't have to worry about where they buy nothing and probably ain't been in the store in 10 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you feel me? Like, so it's different. You, you're talking about a dude who, whose daughter, who's like five or six, just being 19 grand on a piece of art. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a different ball game. True, true. So what they're aware of and what's relevant to them and what we're aware of and what's relevant to us is night and day in a lot of instances. social media like even when i seen people posting it they were tagging these businesses like okay but do you tag. really think puff or jay-z runs their own social media nah, but I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure those people can talk to them you know I'm, it can, you know it can my dude like, i ran social media for a dude who his wife is the heir to a billion dollar industry for six years mm-hmm. this dude paid me every month for six years we might have had 15 conversations over those six years. Let me ask you this. So you mean to tell me nobody that Diddy's around is seeing these comments, know these... Know these no, they probably people. are, but I'm fam... Even his friends, like people that's, that, that, that are celebrities. They probably are, but I, I don't necessarily know if they're aware, and if they are aware, maybe they was like, this isn't being done right, so we want to do our own thing. There's kind of like a different push, and I, I got to agree with this. There's kind of like a different push when, say... Her, you have live hip hop daily, and say T.I. and Jermaine Dupri want to do a live thing, and they come to you and they invest in you. 
that's going to be on the blogs for like a day. That's going to hit the business blogs. These hip-hop heavyweights invest in existing platform, yada, yada, yada. Then it's up to you to push the line on that. But if T.I. and Jermaine Dupri come out and do a press conference saying we're launching this brand new platform for live hip-hop, it's a completely different kind of eyes on it. It's a completely different vibe to it. And that's probably what it is hmm. at the end of the day. That's just my opinion. I'm that's not a billionaire. Good. What the hell do I know? Right, right. <laughs> and, and, and it goes to the, way, to the way, like, you know, things are presented. Like, every time Jay-Z invests and starts in something, it's usually jay Z starting this thing where, you know, Nas is like, he's investing in stuff that already exists. And that's not getting all the play until it's like, oh, well, that shit sold for a hundred billion zillion dollars, and guess who invested in it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I, I can understand that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the ways, the ways that it's, it's, it's in, in uh, it's presented to the public. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't really necessarily have a problem with. It. I don't think anything negative can come from it. I'm like, that's oh, nah, that's, nah. that's that's great. And I, and I also feel like businesses that are black owned businesses are way more likely to put their businesses and put their information on something that Jay and Puff are doing than something that, you know, John and Rick are doing to some, some grassroots type stuff. Or even if it has major backing and all, you know, we like to go for what's hot and what's shiny. Not that you could be a Billy. Look at most black people have no idea who Paul judge is, especially yeah. in Atlanta. And he worked five miles from here. You know what I mean? So then if you don't know who that is, Google it, look it up, put yourself up on game. So, uh, again, we, we appreciate y'all listening. Before we leave, man, we, we, we started the Unpopular Opinions last <laughs> week. So I, we're, we're going we're gonna to keep this going as long as we have Unpopular Opinions. So I, I'll, I'll start. Uh, everybody's been paying attention to this Takashi 6 9 guy out of New York who is a who I will call a Hispanic but culturally white young man who from Brooklyn who is – has very questionable activities and does a lot of questionable things. And I understand people being upset. My unpopular opinion is stop responding publicly to his trolling. You're just making him bigger. Every time game says something, the whack 100 says something, you know, somebody YG, or, 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 well, he had the line in his song that people assume is about him. You're making him bigger. You're making him more popular. You're making more people look at his social media, making poor people stream his songs. Like, dude, let this dude perish in silence. Like, it is what it is. Because he's talking crazy, and I don't want to say too much, but protection money only lasts so long at the end of the day. And there, and it's, it's ironic, like, we saw the fight at LAX um, that they put on TMZ and all kind of stuff. But there were other situations that I've seen with my own two eyes that happened to him that didn't make any kind of web or any kind of social media because the people that did it ain't trying to be famous. They was just like, fam, you out of pocket and you need to slow down. And that was that. Stop stop egging this dude on, man. Like, let him have his 15 minutes of fame. Do what he ain't going to do and get the hell out of here, man. There's a million guys that come in talking shit, trolling, fake bloods, fake crips. Like, how y'all mad at him for claiming blood, but you cool with Lil Wayne claiming blood? Like, I don't really understand that. Lil Wayne's not flagrant with it. This dude is flagrant with it. But you understand what I'm saying. You know what I mean? But Chris Brown is cool with claiming blood. Like, my my family is from Fruit Town. I ain't never seen Chris Brown over there, ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A round of applause for that. That's... Perfect. That was a good word. What you, what you got to say, Mari? So I don't think I have any this week. I don't think I have any. Come on, man. You can't leave me hanging. Something oh. made you mad. Something this week. Damn, I don't be getting mad. Oh, shit. I guess my thing right now would be like, man, stop assuming that people are hating on you or something like that. Sometimes folks really just don't be damn knowing what's going on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I know a lot of folks out there, they get mad. Oh, man, that person ain't messing with me. This folk, these people ain't supporting me. These folks, like, a lot of people be having a lot going on. And sometimes people just don't damn know. 
So everybody can, you know, do their best to, like, be a vessel for information. Like, stop assuming that everybody knows. Because, like, matter of fact, case in point, somebody invited me to an event not too long ago. And, no, no, let me backtrack. They had an event not too long ago. The next time I saw them, oh, damn, why ain't you coming to my shit? Like shit, you ain't invite me, man. I put it on Instagram. <laughs> I, I ain't on Instagram, man. I put it on Twitter, my nigga. I ain't on Twitter either. Then I made it on Facebook. Like I don't be on there like that. You have my direct information, right? Why didn't you just tell me what you were doing? Why assume that I don't rock with you because I wasn't there, my nigga? I did not know, right? You know, what that's real. So, I don't know if that's a popular opinion or not, but like that's something that kind of bothered me. Like, funny did. Stop assuming that folks ain't rocking with. Sometimes people just don't be damn knowing. People That's be having right. a lot going on, and I mean, like, if you want somebody at something, directly invite them. If you just really want them to be there that bad. Nah, that's that's super real. That's super real. So. On that note, man, we're about to get up out of here. We appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate y'all listening. Make sure you follow us on Day One Radio on all social media. That is D-A-Y, the number one, and radio. Make sure you also follow Hip Hop Trivia ATL on all your social media. And I don't know what day is coming on, but we are going to be on an NPR show here and now. We're recording it tomorrow, but I don't know when they're going to air it. Uh, talking about the uh, Atlanta hip-hop scene. So they have a segment called DJ Sessions. Last time we did it, it was pretty crazy. I know a whole lot of people listen to it. So mm-hmm. make sure y'all keep an eye out for that. We will post it on social media, letting y'all know when it airs. And uh, we'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.